Inquiries into the Possibility of Video Games as Art Part 1 Games and Art A Conceptual Problem It cannot be said any other way. It cannot be danced around. Games as games are not art, and cannot be art precisely because they are games. Be they video or otherwise, there is no denying that a game has an entirely different aim, that is, entertainment, fun, or winning, than art does. This difference in purpose, one that even if it were for itself, would make no difference in this regard, is the mark of how games and art are simply different domains of human experience, and they are overall unequal, not only in difference, but in the measure of ontological being and importance, such that games are to art as consciousness is to self-consciousness. Games simply have never been, and cannot as games for their own sake be, about the self-reflection of the absolute, the ultimate, fundamental, and final ground of all reality, from beginning to end, from death to life, and from dead matter to living organisms. Because it is inherent to games that at their point the entire reason for engaging them is to play them, that there be a clear winning condition no matter how simple or broad it be, and because there is a real possibility of failure due to an individual's failure against another individual or against the challenge itself, these experiences as experiences hold in themselves no grand meaning in their immediate inaction by any player. As one struggles to win in consciousness of the immediate goal of winning, there simply is no meaning to the actions and interactions one carries out in the effort to win. Tetris is a fully developed game which, in is, which is in itself endless both against the game and against other players. Football or soccer is also a fully developed game which is endless against any other player teams. Though a Tetris or soccer match may be shown as an intelligible presentation or representation of a set of concepts of far deeper meaning when subsumed under a work of art, it is nonetheless the case that if we take the games that we play as the aesthetic object to measure, it is quite hard to say that, as we played them, we were really intuiting a greater meaning in the contingent events of our contingent matches, with contingent opponents at contingent moments of our lives. Games at their best are the idea of self-overcoming, yet the self-overcoming of games lacks essentiality and true necessity. They are contingent, the problem and its solutions are arbitrary positings, and in them there is truly little for humans to experience about the development and nature of freedom. In much harsher terms, we may say that games are, and this is already a very common intuition and notion, simply not true, and therefore hold almost no meaning in themselves, but can always be seen to manifest a social spirit and context. No particular match seems to hold any real meaning, but the structure and dynamic of a game that has become a massively popular pastime in a given culture is absolutely a phenomenon whose necessity must be grasped within the society that has produced it. Games necessarily arise from the sociality of play, and play is the joyful activity of reveling in the arbitrary exercise of essential human powers. Games subsume play under arbitrary conditions and constraints and make it a contest to prove oneself against something or someone else as a roundabout way to prove oneself against oneself. Play has no external purpose. It is not formal. It evolves with the contingency of the moment-by-moment -moment context without rules and without much apparent reason. A game also can have no external purpose. It can also evolve with the contingency of context if the rules are expanded, but nonetheless the rules must be in place and a condition of winning must be clear, and it must above all be possible to fail and lose. Why the question even matters? The only way, and the only reason, a confusion seems to arise and appear for people today regarding this distinction of games and art is that in video games, the unity of artistic mediums has become so heavily intertwined with games and gameplay that for what seems like now, more than half of growing boys and young men, video games are the primary point of contact with the arts in general and with synthetic total works of art, that is, artworks that unify in themselves all forms of art under one concept in particular. Films, despite being so profitable, are not considered by many to be hobbies of theirs, nor is music, yet video games are. Very few people watch films every single day, or watch the same film or type of film for dozens of hours every week. Yet with video games, this isn't rare at all. This is partially one of the seemingly obvious social reasons for why the question of video games and their artistic validity is now an increasing question of interest. Hundreds of millions now have great attachment to video games with narratives and interactive choices, that left lasting impacts on account that, for many of these individuals, these encounters are the closest they have gotten to a sustained contact with the world of art, a contact which they experience as agreeable and desirable, unlike many books and films, which are classics of yore. 
Even if the narratives are mediocre, and even if the visual and sound art is mediocre, addictive and fun gameplay can substitute it as our interest until we get bored enough to quit the endless treadmill race, or finally encounter something in the art that finally hooks us in to the rest of it. Art is today a recognized domain of deep human meaning. It has high value in our modern culture, and given that increasingly more and more people have no encounter with this domain of higher culture other than through the enticement of games, one can see how the determination of whether video games are or are not art is yet another part of the struggle for human recognition and worth. If video games are not art, so goes the simple thought, then these things which are for me of deep personal and even spiritual meaning are not considered by society to truly be meaningful, and my relation and activities to these creations as a hobby and as a reflective interest are determined as erroneous, null, and void. This, especially in current social thinking, is something which is considered an intolerable condition if we conceive art in ways that exclude these objects of social enrichment. 